Hey there, Sports History fans. Arnie Chapman here from the Sports History Network to share with you an awesome announcement. Now dig on this. Four of our amazing podcasts have clinched spots in the final round of the Sports Podcast Awards, and we need your support to take home the trophy. First up, we've got Basketball History 101 driving the lane in the best basketball category. Then on deck, we've got Orville Mulligan Sports Writer. He's cracking up the competition in the best sports comedy category. Marty's Illegal Stick is dominating the ice next in the best hockey category. And last but not least, we have Wrestling with Heels on powerbombing its way to victory in the best wrestling category. Now, again, we're counting on you to cast your vote and help out these incredible podcasters secure their well-deserved recognition. It's super easy. All you got to do is head over to the dedicated landing page. That's at sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash vote. Again, that's sports historynetwork.com forward slash vote. Now, let's take another look at sports yesteryear with this episode brought to you by, of course, the Sports History Network. Welcome, everybody, to the final episode of 2023 on One Guy with a Mic. Presents dingers and dunks. A lot less dingers and a lot less dunks lately because we've been talking about the gridiron. So, I appreciate everybody coming in, hanging out chilling relaxed and listening to the little podcast of mine here it's been a real fun year so far it was a fun year i shouldn't say so far because well you can say so far uh year's almost over this will be the last podcast of the year 2023 then we'll be busting out podcast for 2024 already wow all right what a year it has been we didn't really do a whole lot at the first part of this year, right? Didn't put a lot of podcasts out at that time. Just because we were saving up money for our trip, working hard, putting in those 16-hour days so we could take a 10-day adventure in the middle of July. So, this is not only just a review of the year that the podcast has accomplished, but it's also a review in sports, baby, because that's what we're here for, right? All about the sports 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 i really hope everybody had a great holiday everybody got what they wanted for christmas santa brought didn't put any lumps of coals in their stocking or anything like that that everybody was just like you know it was it was a blessed year because you know for me it was very much so right let's uh and just really happy to have along we uh we did like i said towards at the back half of the year we we concentrated more on football it was football fridays it was great it was a fun time we're probably going to do some more football podcasts uh next year as well so doing a little revamp uh we did some historical uh topics but we also basically did current historical topics as well I think that's going to be a continuation of what's going to take place next year as well. Uh, we're going to try to put some more uh, YouTube out. We're going to try to put some more, uh, do some TikTok stuff. Maybe do a little more content creation rather than just podcast creation. Uh, kind of doing that in the old um, streaming video game situation right now on Twitch as well. So I think 2024 we're just going to take it off. What would 2023 bring us? Well, it brought us more listeners to where we are now over 650. We have 676 unique listeners of this podcast. We reached the download. We crossed the thousand download um, downloads this year as well. We had a fantastic November with 277 downloads for the month. We reached a lot of people, brought a lot of people in to our little unique area of sports. And we're going to continue with that going into 2024. I also had an eight-week stretch of podcasts being released every single week as well. I'm sure you guys got tired of listening to that, but... I appreciate every single one of you for listening to me. It's a lot of fun. Uh, Also, the goal of 2024 is to actually have guests on the podcast. 
uh, whether that's um, friends of mine, uh, that whether that's coworkers that want to get on the podcast, or whether that's just uh, former players that we can get here to do some interviews. That's going to be the goal for 2024, is to actually expand on the podcast to being just more than just my voice every single week. So, those are the goals of what happened. Uh, so, let's talk about the trip that we took in July, where we started the day off, uh, leaving out on July 18th, heading to Field of Dreams in Dyersville, Iowa. Now, I've lived in Iowa pretty much my entire life. Never been to Dyersville, Iowa to the Field of Dreams movie set. Couldn't really see the MLB park because it was under construction, which is fine. That's fine. But I'll tell you what, if you go, make sure to bring a ball and a glove because you can play catch in the field. I didn't do that. So lost a little bit of that experiment, uh, experience of that. Of that. Um, checked out the gift shop, got some stuff out of the gift shop. Uh, you can take a tour of the house. We did not have the time to take a tour of the house. But you could do that as well. You can walk outside of the co- you can walk out of the corn, which I did do. Uh, there is photos on the Facebook page of that as well. And I th- they say we spent about an hour there just walking around, checking things out. Um, I would say you could probably go there and spend some time more time there. Obviously, so there was so we started off there. Then we continued our trip to on day one to Chicago. Where we, where I, saw my first ever Chicago Cubs game. And it was against the Washington Nationals, right? And obviously we started our day at, early that morning, we started our day at 5 a.m. So by the time the full, the baseball game rolled around, it was already 7 o'clock, right? So it was a long day. We drove a lot of miles. Put in nine hours on the trip, right? So, what happened on that fateful July 18th game? Well, the Cubs go on to win 17-3. to That's right. The Chicago Cubs beat the Washington Nationals 17-3. to Seiya Suzuki had four hits. Drove in three runs that night. Patrick Wisdom hit a home run that night as well. And uh, Miguel Amanya and Michael Tauschman drove in three runs for the Cubs. And they had 20 hits that night. It was a very magical evening. Very fun, fun, fun night. Definitely need to go back to Wrigley next year. So then we stay in Chicago. Then we wake up and make our trip to... We stopped at South Bend for to check out Notre Dame. Drove around the campus in Notre Dame for a bit. All right. Then, after that, we continued on to Canton, Ohio, where we'd stay for the night. Then we'd wake up, go to the National Football Hall of Fame, which, by the way, was very, very amazing. Not only just the bust room, but they got a guy in Eng- from England that is a volunteer, and it's a... If y'all have ever seen Big Bang Theory, it's definitely sh- the Sherman moment where he is working remotely and has a robot working around the thing, or working around the office. That's what this guy does. And it was by far the best 15 minutes of talking to that guy I've had. The bust room is amazing. A lot of the bu- busts are worn from people touching them, obviously. But it's a circular s- situation. Like, you go start at the bottom and work your way to the top. It's a very unique experience. You could probably definitely spend... I mean, we spent about a day there. I mean, not a day. We spent a good half a day there before we had to leave. Because then we had to, then we drove to Cooperstown that night. Oh, well, we stayed in Sydney, New York, by the way. Um, but then we spent... Th- so, we left Canton, go to Sydney, New York, spend the night. Spend three days in Cooperstown. Well, actually, it was like two. Because we were up there on Friday which was the first official day of the weekend. Not a whole lot going on, some camps and stuff. Uh, Then the second day was the, um, they had the parade at night, which was pretty awesome. So walked through the Hall of Fame twice. 
which I would recommend if you're going to walk through the Hall of Fame twice and you're going to make a trip to the Canton Hall of Fame, you might as well get a membership because you get, if you're a member of the NFL Hall of Fame, you get into the Canton Hall, the Baseball Hall of Fame for free. Just saying. So, to complete advantage of that, by the way. Um, met, a, met some cool guys sitting on a park bench, talked to them for about an hour and a half about baseball in the Hall of Fame, so that was great. Uh, it was one of the smaller crowds for the Hall of Fame induction ceremony with Fred McGriff and Scott Rowland going in. Um, was able to meet one of the guys that we follow each other on Twitter, uh, so that was pretty cool. Um, so we got a picture together and uh, got and talked and everything, and that would be the um, McGriff Collector, where he's got all sorts of different fred mcgriff stuff so that was fun meeting him um and i was actually happy to see fred mcgriff uh make the hall of fame which was even funnier yet my phone died um uh my phone died just as the parade was ending and got to fred mcgriff and so i didn't get any pictures of scott Rowland. but that's okay with me because i'm not a scott Rowland fan so we spent three days or two days up in Cooperstown, then we left that Sunday morning, missed induction ceremony, whatever. And that's neither here nor there at this point. But I would go back to Cooperstown on induction ceremony for for fun. Um, I would also go back to Cooperstown on uh, and spend a weekend up there because that area of upstate New York is beautiful, the most beautiful scenery I've ever seen in my life, and I've seen the Colorado, which is amazing, by the way. Uh, so then we left there and we went down to Gettysburg, walked the Gettysburg battlefield. That was pretty more memorable. Um, you can take tours, you can pay for the, pay for the car tour or whatever, but you can just park and walk too, if you want to like, and not pay for anything. So that was fun. Then we finished her, then we went down to, um, DC and we saw all the monuments pretty much on the national mall that we didn't get to see we didn't do any of the museums we did take a tour of the Capitol. that was pretty sweet i uh, got saw the rotunda and like the statue room and all this and then the next day we walked the mall again the national mall again and we got to take a tour of the white house which taking the tour of our white house is a lot of fun um granted it's only the east wing granted you only get to see like the we're the entryway of the White House. You don't really get to see the West Wing or anything like that. But you do get to see the East Wing, the press room, uh, the state room, all that. And it's if you can get in to it, I would recommend taking a tour of the White House at some point. Because that, to me, was my favorite part. My uncle's favorite part was the Capitol. Uh, so then from D.C., we left and went to Charleston, West Virginia. Then uh, stayed the night in West Virginia. And then we drove all the way back from West Virginia all the way to... Sioux City, Iowa in one shot. So, that was a fun trip. Um, and then, obviously, we started golfing more this year uh, after that trip, which is great. And then we started doing the podcast a lot more. So, I, I think that was a nice little, nice little breather that trip was to really recharge my batteries and, and get me to do more things that I like to do. And the podcast is the, doing this is obviously one of them. So, on that note, what did 2023 bring us in sports, right? Well, on January 22nd, uh, or not January 22nd, geez, January 2nd of this year, you had DeMar Hamlin, who suffered a cardiac arrest on the field while the Bills and Bengals were playing each other. And then 90 days later, he was, he was finally released from the hospital. So that was amazing of what they did on the field, right? They were able to revive him, bring him back, and now he's actually playing again, right? Uh, then you got February 1st, uh, Tom Brady announced his retirement for the second time from football and then takes a minor stake in ownership of the Las uh, Vegas Raiders. Um, let's see, you had LeBron on February 7th. He passed Kareem Abdul-Jabbar with 38,387 points to become the NBA's all-time leading scorer. On the 12th of February, you had the Chiefs beat the Eagles 38-35 in the Super Bowl. All right. Um, you had in 
March Madness. You had number 16, Fairlight Dickinson, beat Purdue, only becoming the second team to ever be a number 16 team to be a one seed, which I think that's the more the college atmosphere is changing, I think the more that's going to happen. We're going to have a 16 beat and a one seed. Um, Let's see. You had the Packers traded Aaron Rodgers in March, right? Or that was, or sorry, in April. Um, and then he had only played four snaps for the Jets and tears Achilles. Correct? Correct. So that was bad news for Aaron Rodgers. Uh, in June, you had... May wasn't really a whole lot of things going on that were really anything. So then in June, what happens? Well, the Denver Nuggets won their first NBA championship in franchise history. As well, being... You had the Vegas Golden Knights winning their first Stanley Cup as well. And then Victor Wimbiyama was drafted number one over by the, by the Spurs in the NBA draft that year. Then you roll on to nothing really in August because it's dog days of summer. Football just starting, baseball happening, everything like that. So nothing that we really discuss on this podcast was taking place during that time um you had the aces winning another WNBA championship in october on october 18th they won back-to-back titles november 1st you had the texas rangers winning their first world series uh in franchise history over the arizona diamondbacks with Corey sear being your mvp um in november you had the Australia winning the 2023 Cricket World Cup, beating India in the final. Of golf news, uh, you had Tiger Woods made his return to competitive golf um, on November 30th. And then you come into December, and you had Florida State get snubbed for the college playoff, football playoff. Or as CNN calls it, controversially left out. I don't think there's any controversy about it. Um, Alabama deserved to be in. Maybe not so much Texas, right? Then you had Shohei Atani announcing that he's going to sign a 10-year, $700 million deal with the Los Angeles Dodgers and only make $2 million a year because he's deferring the rest of it. That made huge news as well. And now we're at the end of the year where we're going to, where we got playoffs coming up. You got playoff championships. So that's going to be fun. Um, one of the things that I thought was crazy I mean I guess not really crazy because there's not really anything that to me there's like stuff that happened in sports this year but nothing like crazy crazy you know what I mean you don't really you didn't really have like yet Otani's like contract right that's that's crazy right but there wasn't like really and then you had a lot of first time winners but there's not like anything that was over overwhelming to me in sports this year, which I thought, I think that's probably a good thing that sports is probably probably coming back to like not having all those like wow moments, right? I think that's a, that's probably a good thing. Um, I think, but if we look forward to 2024, um. Uh, and potential champions. I really think the Ravens look good to be the um, winner of the Super Bowl this year, as well as their plan. There's not really a team in the NFC that's really put together as well yet. Uh, for baseball wise, everybody's going Dodgers, and I understand like they're getting a stacked team. I understand they got Otani and they got Yanomamura, and they got you know, Tyler Glass now, and they got all these big names, right? But just because you have big names doesn't mean, like, that means you're going to come out here and win a title. I mean, ask the Yankees about that. They had big names for a lot of times in the years from the last time they won a title in 2000 to 2009, and they still didn't win one until 2009. So, um, so I really really um oh Yamamoto, sorry um so i really just think 
that until they start playing games, you're not going to have, you're not going to know who's going to win. And we all can sit here and say, oh yeah, the Dodgers are going to win it all for the next 10 years, which I don't think that's the case. I think they could win like three championships in the next 10 years, but I don't think they're going to win it all next year. You also got to remember the Dodgers have, have the, uh, you know, two, two of the Dodgers championships have came off on shortened seasons. So, man, to me, if it's not a short season, I don't see the Dodgers winning, a, winning the World Series. That's just me, though. Um, we also offer basketball wise, uh, the Clippers are non or were unstoppable for nine straight games, and it looks like with Harden and George and Kawhi in the lineup together, they're they're no one's gonna beat them. Boston's the best team in the NBA right now, which is fine, but they'll they'll fold come playoff time. Like, uh, you know, like lately, that they usually do. Um, and college football-wise, you know, we got the four in the playoffs. You got Washington, Texas, Alabama, Michigan. I think Washington and, and Alabama is going to be in the college football playoffs next year. And I think that's, uh, and I think it's going to be Alabama's to win. So that's where I'm at. Um, I don't, I just wanted to do a quick, so on that note, I just wanted to do a quick little review of the year podcast, uh, of sports, you know, just throw some stuff out there, get a little game plan going for you guys on what's going to go, what we're going to do in 2024. Um, I feel like more of, it's not more of an end of the year, but more of the beginning of next year is what we're going to be looking forward to. So I always appreciate everybody listening and talking or listening to me talk. As I said, we're going to probably get, you're going to hear some other voices on here because we're going to start amping this thing up. We're, it's, it's going into, we're going to be starting year three of this podcast uh, next year. All right. It's going to be starting year three. Uh, come February 4th, it'll be two years since we've started this podcast in the beginning of year three. So it's time to get some more voices on here, um, get some hosts, uh, get some not really hosts, but you know, get some more opinions on here. So if you want to uh, be on the podcast, I am taking all, any and all comers. Uh, just go ahead and reach out to me on Twitter, one guy with a mic. All right, and uh, tweet tweet at me saying you want to be on the podcast. Present me with a topic, and we'll bring it up. Okay. All right, you guys have a, a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year, Kwanzaa, whatever you celebrate this year, don't celebrate. Uh, but I look forward to you talking to you all guys in the year 2024. Um, make sure that if you're not following yet, go ahead and follow, please. Uh, make sure you download the episodes as well. Make sure you go check out my YouTube page in case you ever want to listen and hear the podcast on YouTube. In case you can't, don't have time to listen on your phone or whatever, and you're doing something in the house, you know, I was listening on YouTube. It's one guy with a mic is the YouTube channel as well. If you Google one guy with a mic all together, it'll bring you right to the Google page, by the way, or uh, you, the YouTube page. Okay. So if you just Google one guy with a mic all together, it'll be okay. So, all right, with that, um, appreciate y'all. And I will be talking to you guys, uh, next week. All right. Hey there, Sports History fan. This is Arnie Chapman, a.k.a. the Football History Dude, and I wanted to thank you for stopping by to listen to another episode here on the Sports History Network. Our podcasters are passionate about uncovering and sharing sports stories from yesteryear. And if you didn't know it already, we have over 30 shows across the network covering all sorts of sports history topics. In fact, here's a glimpse into one of our awesome podcasts here on the network. The Pigskin Tales Podcast is all about the lesser-known pro football players. Yes, there are stories about the ones we know, like Brad Tarkenton and Harold Red Grange. But, have you ever heard of Ernie Nevers? How about Dave Osborne or even Grady Alderman? These men created their own path to the NFL. How did they do it? Listen to the Pigskin Tales podcast. Now streaming on your favorite music platform. Go to pigskintales.com. How about that?
I bet you're super hyped to go listen to that new podcast, right? Well, to learn about this show and all the other podcasts on the network, head over to sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash podcast. Again, that's sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash podcast. Head over there today to find your next favorite sports history podcast.